And now the last contestant in the piano semifinals, Miss Laura Mason. Uh, Miss Mason, would you please start with Schumann's Abschluss? good enough to start the espressivo passage again, please. And this time, imagine that you have fallen madly in love and can only convey it through the music. Miss Mason. Have you something of Chopin that you would like to do for us? Yes. Not that one, please not that one. I cannot listen to that one. When I was a young student in Paris, every concierge's daughter was practicing it. Have you... <laughs> Have you worked on Opus 10, number 12? Yes. Play it. The bravura passage, to the end. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your indulgence for a few minutes, and uh, then we will announce the names of the three finalists. Miss Mason. Tears. Come now, they don't belong on such a lovely face. I was supposed to be in a piano competition, not a beauty contest. You did something very bad, Miss Mason, very amateurish. On the fire, you turned and ran. Inexcusable for artists. But I really didn't have to run, you know, because... There was nothing to stay for. You, you succeeded very nicely in breaking me down. You sit there like three little, little kings on a throne with your egomania. Good, very good, Miss Mason. Anger, spirit, yes. Tears, vapors, no. But you didn't even hear me play. I was tense and nervous. Now, what do you think you will be when you face an audience who have paid to hear you? Wait till you feel their indifference or displeasure moving over you like a, a chill from a glacier. Or some stupid conductor like myself misleads you with a wrong beat and leaves you to flounder in front of 2,000 people. Now, my dear, I will not say that talent and accomplishment is the least of being a concert artist, but without stamina, poise, endurance, without, without the stomach, the rest is nothing. They're waiting. I must go. Three contestants who have won the right to enter the finals next Friday are Miss Sidna Rome, <laughs> Mr. George Piatra, <laughs> and Miss Laura Mason. Mr. 
future. <laughs> thank you. Well, don't thank me for your ability. You have five years of hard work in front of you, if you win next week. And don't be so cavalier about being told of your loveliness. I have never heard that a beautiful face hindered an artist's career. Times said that Jutra gave a superb reading at the Bronx. You agree with that? Yes, yes. Good, I agree too. His usual superb reading. Three parts glitter, one part iconoclasm with a dash of histrionics. Is it a crime to be popular, to be appreciated? Well, if it is, it's a profitable one, isn't it? Men like Jutra have a responsibility to music, to be daring, to break new ground, not just to remain with the old war horses. Of course, audiences shell out. They're delighted. They love it. They've made it. They have culture. And Jutra confirms it with Brahms, Beethoven, and Bach. Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms. There are new composers who are... Oh, well, it's an interesting topic, but regrettably, we've run out of time. I have to give some private lessons, so you must allow me the prerogative of the last word. Okay, I promise you equal time tomorrow. So long, so long. How about coffee and then work? First work. Okay, let's start with the Mozart we've been working on. Let's start again. Uh, give it a stronger entrance. Much stronger. Whew. I'm sorry. I thought you were used to interruptions. Or is that only the privilege of the maestro? Paul. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. Who am I to attack Jutra? I'm nobody. I sit around coffee houses with a lot of other nobodies. We make smart remarks about the great ones. I'm sorry. You're spending money on private lessons and I'm wasting it. I never waste time with you, Paul. And you're more than just a teacher. You're a very wonderful teacher. You think so, huh? OK, let's go to work. Oh, listen, how about shooting up to 73rd Street afterward for rye and soda? I've missed that the last few weeks. I have, too. But I can't take any time away from the piano. Piotr and that Rome girl are stiff competition. And I've got to win. Laura. I can't guarantee that you'll win the competition, but I promise I'll help you be the best that you can be. So you go to work. Oh, listen, how about uh, supper and relaxing afterwards? OK. Seven at Nino Sharp. Good. That'll give me a chance to hear Dutra. He's recording tonight. I wish I'd never mentioned his name. Play. Gentlemen, I apologize for intruding on your bedtime and uh, domestic preoccupations, but we have a recording to make, and I propose that it not be a disgrace to you, me, and the orchestra association. 
Again, please. From G. And I want some sharp, clean entrance. I want some life in your tone, whether pianissimo or double forty. Ready. <laughs> Want any visitors during recording? Who is that? Who are you? Miss Mason. Of course. I, I'm so sorry. I, I heard you were recording. I, I'm so never sorry. Never mind, never mind. I'm delighted to see you. Come, come. Well, I don't have to ask you how you are. You are blooming. How is everything? Oh, everything's just wonderful. I've fallen in love with New York. And surely New York with you. Sit down. How much of the Mozart did you hear? I heard the first movement. What do you think of it? Well, I, I'm hardly the person to ask to judge a Dutra performance. I, I think the, what you do with those old museum pieces is, is magic. Oh, so you're another arrogant young person who dismisses Mozart with a snap of the fingers. I'm sorry. I didn't... Don't be sorry. You're enchanting. Now you wait here. I want to talk to you about many things. We'll have a sandwich together at the break. We, yeah, I you stay. Can't. Just... I'm worried about the balance. I want to hear the playback. staying with Dutra. Now, what kind of a choice? You're making such a big thing out of it. You're really being childish. I don't display childishness. Resentment, yes. Bitterness, practically it will, but never childishness. All he's done is just... Express an interest in your work. And all you've done is come to a recording session. But now you're having supper with him. Yes. Right here in this room. must remain pure because he's the keeper of the dream for all the rest. How young you are. Why, because I'm babbling. No, but you say pure and you're so sure of what you mean. One day will come when you will no longer be sure. And what happens in between, however much it has pleased and fulfilled you, will be a tragedy because it will have cost you your youth. But youth is wonderful. Don't blush about it. Glory in it. It'll pass soon enough. 
It's time, Maestro. Yes. Well, I must go now. I have to finish here, and then a meeting of the orchestra committee. They're stupid, but they're the possessors of large sums of very clever money. Take heed, Laura. I wanted a big career. Now I'm a slave to it. Uh, you don't mind. Charles will put you in a taxi. When am I going to see you again? When would you like to? Well, obviously, you have some plans for tomorrow evening, some young man of the many who are your slaves. No. I, I don't have any plans, except to work, you know. And there aren't any young men, slaves or otherwise. Most young men bore me. Oh, this is excellent news. I expect to be through at about 8 o'clock, 9 at the latest. Why don't you come to my place? We'll have supper. Huh? We'll talk some more about life, your career, other interesting matters. Shall I dress? Yes, by all means. We'll make it an occasion. That's a very good idea. The thought will sustain me for the next dreary hours. Uh, Charles, take good care of Miss Mason. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Keep that up, Mason, and you've got it made. It was very good. Thank you. Evening with a great man must have gone exceedingly well. Nope, don't tell me about it, I'll tell you. At dinner, all charm. Old cherubs flying, the Danube blue, a little Hungarian schmaltz, a little ponderous Russian wisdom, uh, oh, a little French wit. And then uh, home for a nightcap, champagne, perhaps by candlelight. Served by an urbane Viennese butler? It was home to a cold water flat and reality by 11 o'clock. Reality? I didn't think you lived there, Princess. What's that supposed to mean? Well, that means that Dutra isn't reality. He's a dream, an icon. He doesn't belong in a cold water flat, and you, you, my smoky-eyed, lovely girl, you don't belong in his life. He corrupts. What gives you the right to say that? Well, don't I always wear my short Fon Leroy pants every time we go out? Oh, we hold hands and we kiss goodnight, all very proper, all very Chillicothe, Ohio. That's because you mean more to me than just a quick conquest, Laura. I know. I never really pressed you, did I? Well, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, no, honey, no. You should see a complete Smith pass. I, I know the rest of me may be fusty and a little frayed, but my pass is out of the space age. Technically marvelous. An automated orchestra of 500 pieces. A dazzling display, absolutely overpowering. Does that sound exciting? Very. Okay, now let's finish this conversation. How about the two of us going up and smoke tonight, right after my evening class? A big bonfire seen as far north as Harlem and as far west as Jersey. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I have a date. All right. I'm going to be late for my class. What other people call my egomania, I regard as no more than an absolutely accurate sense of value. The value of myself is not any less, because I'm judging it. Well, I understand that. And I don't behave as though it is any less. Obviously. <laughs> and you must understand that my sense of values tells me that I should go home and practice. But you just told me that you practiced ten hours today. Why punish yourself? Music should be a joy as well as hard work. Well, it's really your fault. You gave me so many selections to prepare. Granted. But a musician is not only an instrument, he's also a human being. 
Sometimes, in order to do our best, we must forget work for an evening. A toast to blessed relaxation. Laura, you drink, but you're... You seem tense, upset. Why? No, I'm not. Yes, you want to leave. You still want to go home and practice, perhaps. No, I, I really don't want to. Then what is it? I don't know. I, I'm confused, and I'm not used to it. I always had a very clear idea of who I am and what I want and where I'm going. And you are no longer so? No. How may I help you? I'm yours to command. Oh, don't tease me. I really, I, I'm really frightened. Of what are you frightened, Laura? Of passion, love, fulfillment, of the dark? I was thinking about, about your wife and family. My wife and family? But what have you to do with my wife and family? And they with you? My wife is in Connecticut with my daughter. My son is in school in Boston. They're all very well and they wish you the same. Laura. Laura. What do you want of me? You want perhaps that I should be someone else? Someone without a family? A football player, perhaps. A playmate. Someone you went to high school with in your hometown. No. No scene. Please, no scene. Laura. Laura. You know what my life is. I have no time for hysterical women or children. I will not be possessed, not for a lifetime, not for a year, not for an hour. That is something my friends understand, my family understands, and that you must understand once and for all. I acknowledge all my defects of character and all my failures of relationship in advance. And I give you leave not to accept them, to walk away with your head held high and your pride duly enshrined where it belongs, on the tip of your nose. All right. Charles will put you in a taxi, and you will go home, like a good girl. Now, Wagner didn't suffer. He made everybody else suffer. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Oh, come on in, Ma. Sit down. I'll be through with the lecture in a minute. Well, what I want to say to you finally is, listen. Just listen. Oh, not to me. I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness at very low pay. But listen to the world and the sounds the world makes. Now, music is not just the province of the box and the Beethovens. It's jazz and hand organs and harmonicas. It's where the joy of living and the pain of living, even the, the vulgarity of living, takes form and sound. Now, that's music, all of it. You've got to take it all in. OK, good night. I'll see you Thursday. Come on. You all right? I'm fine. I just wanted to see you. Oh, good. You've been drinking. <laughs> I had a drink. Oh, you did? <laughs> What's going on? Where would you like to go? Oh, you want to go to the Bar of Music? Oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the Bar of Music. I don't want to be a musician tonight. I just want to be a human being. OK? OK. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I weaving? You're weaving? Am I? Yes. <laughs> the spell. Wait a minute. 
I mean, you wanted me to do that, didn't you? Isn't that what it's all about, or is my radar out of focus? No. I wanted you to kiss me. Well, you gotta make a better try. You gotta put your heart into it. Is that necessary? I'm not very demanding. I just like a little cooperation. I'm afraid I can't. Unless you, you can be magic and change yourself into a black swan with a French accent. What kind of girl are you? There were neither ways to destroy a man like with a rusty butcher knife. Do you I'm supposed to be... Do you know what could happen to someone like you? You could get slapped around until you're silly, even sillier than normal for you. What's well, my stupid name, Paul Smith? What can I expect? Is that a name to sprinkle with stardust and set in the sky? No, no, but Caesar and Charlemagne and Bonaparte and Dutra, those are names to unlock the secret door where the honey is stored, aren't they? For you, listen, listen, I had one illusion left, just one. I couldn't make it with my muse either. She goes for names too, Prokofiev and Shostakovich. But I thought I could with any other girl I wanted to. And then I met you, a China doll who plays the piano. Laura, Laura, there's talent in here, bottled up and curdling and need. Laura, I'm a tower of need, 50 feet tall. You could be home and wife and music and... Laura. Uh, I'll go home and I'll ride myself to sleep while he, the man god, the black swan, the, the white prince clothed in radiance, all he has to do is crook his little finger and you go slithering to him on your belly. You must have the wrong number. No, I didn't have an appointment to have my poodle clipped. I don't even have a poodle. Hello, Laura. May I come in? Of course. Were you going someplace? Oh, no. I, I was just going to go for a walk. Please. Uh, forgive me for not uh, returning your call, not uh, calling you, but... Uh, there were people in from London, and, well, I haven't had an hour to myself. Modigliani. Dead at 37. 36. For every canvas I paint... I plan a thousand. That's very good. Oh, 
for any blame from old Floyd Wayne. <laughs> well, that's very nice for you, but I'm not Brenda. She's one flight up. Oh, now, wait a minute, sweetheart. She told... You told me. The fourth floor, the end of the corner. <laughs> no, no, no. In New York walk-ups, the first floor is called the main floor. The second floor is actually the first floor, so you have to go one more flight up. Oh. <laughs> well, what do you know? Now, how would you like to have a little drink with me? Hmm? All right. Come in. <laughs> I'm Policewoman Mason. This is uh, Sergeant Dutra of the downtown squad. Oh, well, thank you very much. Maybe some other time. Very good. <laughs> I've been wondering. The other night, you practically threw me out. Was that part of my training as a concert artist? Were you trying to toughen up my stomach? Why did you come? I will tell you something, Laura. And you will learn, if we are to be friends, that I do not lie. Not for convenience, not to avoid a scene, nor gain an advantage. I have my own idea of fair play. It is perhaps not totally American, but it is my own. And I came to tell you, Laura, very truthfully, that you are seldom out of my thoughts. I've waited for days and nights for you to say that. I can't believe it. Laura. Laura. Yeah, I, I cannot woo you with romantic platitudes, letters, flowers, and promises of eternal fidelity. There is no bungalow for two in my life, Laura. There is, if you wish it, a very special place, your own. The knowledge that you will bring me something Incalculably precious, your loveliness and freshness and youth. Yeah, I have much to give you too, Laura. Much that is spiritual and much that is practical for your career. But you must be sufficiently grown up to accept the situation as it is and not try to wrench it into the leaves of an old book of fairy tales. How did the plane go? Not very well. Perhaps it'll be better now. Would you play the Mozart for me? All right. Uh-oh. They're starting to rehearse again, but I'll do the best I can. How can you work here, Laura? You create sounds, precise sounds. How can you create them in a barrage of interruptions and noise? Well, I'm afraid it's the only place I have. No, it isn't. Not any longer. My place is quiet, soundproof. It has an aged grand piano and an aged servant who will take excellent care of you. I'm going to Washington for a few days. Why don't you try it? Oh, I, I couldn't. It's sensible. You'll know soon enough if it's the right place for you. I know right now it's the wrong place. <laughs> no, it's whatever you want it to be. But how could I take the key to a man's apartment? By thinking of it as the easiest way to open the door. Mademoiselle Mason. Oh, hi, Charles. Monsieur phoned. He did not want to interrupt your practice. He will be back tonight. Tonight? I thought he said tomorrow night. He's bringing home some friends for a small dinner party. 
He asked me to tell you that they're all from the music world. And he would like you to attend and to play. And play? The Mozart. Tonight? Yes, at 8 o'clock. Will there be anything else? No, no, that's fine. Thank you. You're, you're sure that, that he said the Mozart? Yes, mademoiselle. It was a great pleasure for us, Miss Mason. Thank you. I am grateful you played the Mozart. Uh, like Bernard Shaw, he is my favorite. Mm. And you played it beautifully, my dear. Thank well, you. Count Ballas, was she worth a trip from Washington? Why, from Madrid itself, Philippe. <laughs> is there a chance that you could join us on the Bianca this weekend? But certainly, Laura and I would be delighted. Oh, good. wonderful. Good. Then we will expect you early on Saturday. Uh, at what time? Wait a pop will be fine. Good, we'll be there. Will there be anything else? No, thank you, Charles. Then I will say good night, sir. Good night, Charles. Mademoiselle Laura? Good night, Charles. Well, did you have a good time? I had a wonderful time. Did I really play well? You made me very proud of my opinion. Thank you. And you confirmed my theory. Working here does augment your talent. Some brandy? Oh, no, I don't think I need any brandy. Do you know, I think this has been the most exciting night of my whole life. Now, Laura, you speak as though the evening were over. Well, maybe I will have some brandy, then. Good. Oh, I hope you didn't mind my accepting the Countess's offer. How big a boat is it? But perhaps I shouldn't have spoken for you without asking. You don't have to ask, Philip. You know you don't have to ask. It'll be a wonderful time for us. Tomorrow the competition, and then we'll celebrate on the Bianca. I love you, Philip. I love you. <laughs> Does love among the great ones really have anything to do with love at all? Oh. How long have you been here? Oh, all night. Why? Hey, I'm not here on your account, you know. No, I figure the apartment's gonna be vacant and I want to leave my name with the super, that's all. Well, you see, you have a much better view of the Sullivan Street War surplus and the furniture out there, you know. That's not funny. Well, life's not funny. Paul, please, don't. I love him. You think he loves you? He's incapable of love. All he wants to do is add another lovely girl to his collection. Does it please you so much to hurt me? No. No, but it evidently pleases me to hurt myself. Because I have no right here. You told me that yourself. But I can't help it, Laura. I care. What happens afterwards? What happens when you discover you didn't settle for love because love Jutra can't give you? And you didn't settle for success because no one, Laura, no one but God and Laura Mason can make you a great pianist. What happens then, my smoky-eyed, lovely girl? Is that what you came here to tell me? No. No, I came to congratulate you. Congratulations on winning the first. You did win it, didn't you? 
contest is this afternoon. Yeah. And what happens after you win, Laura? Will you know you're the best or will you have doubts? Will you spend the next five hard years training for a debut, believing you have a chance, or will you always wonder? Because when you win this afternoon, Laura, you won't know what the victory was for. I'm early, but the people are arriving already. I know. And you have a competition to judge. It'll only be a moment. Yes. I won't be using this anymore. And our engagement on the Countess's yacht tomorrow? I won't be there. I want to be there. But I won't be. I don't often meet anyone with as much pride as I have. Maybe it is pride. I don't know. I just know that I have to be me, Laura Mason. I can't be anybody's protege. Don't call me anybody. That I won't forgive. Thank you for being angry. I am angry, but not because of this. I am angry because you imagine that I might have automatically judged you the winner of the competition. I thought you might be influenced by... Th by the happiness you gave me? No. I mustn't even let myself be influenced by... the unhappiness of... losing you. I tip my hat, Laura, to a... remarkable girl who has the courage to reject me. I salute you. You have courage enough, Laura. Now let us hope that you have talent enough. <laughs> 